US president elect Donald Trump announces businessman Elon Musk and Vivek Ramaswamy will lead a new government efficiency group tasked with cutting federal waste. The Department of Government Efficiency, George, will be a part of the Republicans' new administration. Trump has said that the department will provide advice and guidance from outside of government, a move that could allow world's richest man to avoid disclosing his financial holdings. In a post on X, Musk said the department's actions will be published online for maximum transparency and will include a leaderboard for most insanely dumb spending of your tax dollars. Donald Trump has named Fox News host Pete Hexit as his incoming defense secretary. This comes as U.S. media reported that Florida Senator Marco Rubio would be nominated to the key position of Secretary of State. The president-elect also announced that he was choosing his former director of national intelligence, John Ratcliffe, to lead the Central Intelligence Agency during his second term. Pro-Israel figure, former Arkansas governor Mike Huckabee was named as ambassador to Israel. All these announcements comes after Trump named Congressman Mike Waltz, a former Special Forces officer, as his the next National Security Advisor and South Dakota Governor Christy Noam as Secretary of Homeland Security. A New York judge has temporarily halted proceedings against U.S. President-elect Donald Trump in the hush money case. This comes after the prosecution requested for a delay. Judge Juan M. Marshan has set the new date for hearing on November 19th. In his email, the prosecutor also pointed out the unprecedented nature of the situation after Trump's victory. Trump's side had also petitioned the DA's office to agree to delaying the hearing. The judge was expected to rule whether Trump's conviction could be vacated due to a Supreme Court order in July on presidential immunity. Trump was scheduled for sentencing on November 26th. Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, who is the head of the Church of England and spiritual leader of the worldwide Anglican Communion, has resigned. This after facing backlash over a report released last week that claimed he had taken insufficient action to stop a person he described as arguably the Church of England's most prolific serial abuser. John Smith subjected up to 130 victims of abuse over decades in England and Africa. The United States has said that North Korean troops have begun engaging in combat operations alongside Russian troops. Principal Deputy Spokesperson for the U.S.'s Department of State Vedant Patel said that over 10,000 North Korean troops have been sent to eastern Russia and most of them have moved to the far western Kursk region. The statement comes a week after Vladimir Zelensky's statement at the European Political Community Summit press conference in which he had made a similar case. The United States is still hopeful of reaching a Gaza ceasefire deal, even as key negotiator Qatar said it will suspend its mediation efforts until both Israel and Hamas show their willingness and determination. U.S. State Department said that Washington is continuing to pursue a number of initiatives to secure the release of hostages. Furthermore, the U.S. says it has not made an assessment that Israel is in violation of U.S. law after Israel made some changes to address demands laid out in a letter from Washington, D.C. last month to improve the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. The State Department, however, said that Washington would like to see more changes happen in the future. Iran is building its first defensive tunnel in capital Tehran following last month's Israeli strikes on Iranian targets. The tunnel, located near the city centre, will link a station on the Tehran metro to the Imam Khamenei Hospital. 
allowing direct underground access to the medical facility. The announcement was made by Tehran's Transport Commission head. Iranian state media, however, did not elaborate on the tunnel's defensive capabilities. The tunnel announcement comes against the backdrop of heightened tensions between Iran and Israel. Eleven people have been killed in an airstrike at a tea shop in Myanmar. A local ethnic armed group has said that the attack took place in the town of Nuangcho in the northern Shan state. This comes as the junta battles widespread armed opposition to its 2021 coup. Myanmar has been in a turmoil since the military deposed Aung San Suu Kyi's government in 2021 and launched a crackdown that sparked an armed uprising. Junta soldiers have been accused of bloody rampages and using air and artillery strikes to punish the civilians. Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan Al Saud is on a two-day official visit to India. He is scheduled to meet with External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar at Hyderabad House today. MEA spokesperson Randhir Jaiswal has said in a social media post that the visit will provide further impetus to the multifaceted India-Saudi Arabia bilateral ties. During the visit, the Saudi FM will also co-chair the second meeting of the Political, Security, Social and Cultural Committee of the India-Saudi Arabia Strategic Partnership Council. The SPC was established in 2019 after Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Saudi Arabia. Voting is underway in the first phase of assembly elections in India's Jharkhand. 43 of the state's 81 seats are voting in the first phase. In this phase, the remaining 38 seats will vote in the second phase, scheduled to take place on November 20th. A turnout of 13% has been recorded till 9 a.m. IST. For this phase, the ruling Jharkhand Mukti Morcha has fielded 23 contestants. Speaking of its allies, Congress has fielded 17 and Rashtriya Janta Dal has fielded 5. The opposition Bhatia Janta Party has fielded 36 contestants. Janta Dal United and Bhaujan Samaj Party, they have contested 7. Voting is underway in the bipoles for Wynard Parliamentary Constituency in the Indian state of Kerala. Congress General Secretary Priyanka Vadra is making her electoral debut from the seat, which was won by a brother Rahul Gandhi in the Lok Sabha elections held earlier this year. The Wynard seat fell vacant after Rahul chose another seat. Priyanka is pitted against LDF's Satya Mukheri, NDA's Navya Haridas and 13 others. Bipoles are being held in 31 assembly constituencies across India. Voting is underway in seven seats in Rajasthan, six in West Bengal, five in Assam, four in Bihar, three in Kerala, two in Madhya Pradesh and one each in Meghalaya, Gujarat, Chhattisgarh and Karnataka. In two seats of Sikkim, contestants of Sikkim Krantikari Morcha were declared unopposed winners on October 30th. Counting of votes, the bipoles will be held on November 23rd, though these bipoles are not going to have any bearing on the governments. Uh, they are seen as a big test for the Congress and the INDI bloc, which failed to put up a united show in the recent Haryana Assembly polls. <laughs> At least 14 people have died and 13 are missing after a bus carrying 27 wedding guests plunged into the Indus River in Pakistan. The bus was travelling from a store in occupied... Pardon me. The bus was travelling from a store in Pakistan's Gilgit Baltistan region to Punjab's Chakwal district. The bus fell from the Telshi Bridge into the river near Deir. 
Senior Superintendent of Police, Sher Khan, confirmed that 14 bodies have been recovered. Search and rescue operations are still underway to find the missing people. According to the eyewitnesses, the bus was travelling at a high speed before the driver lost control and plunged into the river. Strengthening winds and bad conditions along the New York-New Jersey border are hindering firefighters as they work to gain control of a stubborn wildfire. One of a handful of blazes burning in the area. A red flag warning have been issued for the Pesiac County, New Jersey area, where the Jennings Creek fire has torched some 5,000 acres of parched area. New Jersey Forest Fire Services said that it was it has contained 20% of the fire. Flood hit areas near the eastern city of Valencia rushed to clear drainage systems, piling sandbags as makeshift floodgates while they prepare for another potential powerful storm. The worst floods in modern Spanish history killed over 200 people. The National Weather Service issued an orange alert, which is the second highest for strong or torrential rains. Emmet forecasts as much as 120 mm of rain in 12 hours and although the storm is not expected to be as powerful as the one two weeks ago, it could be a blow for towns still trying to recover. Oil and gas major shell won an appeal against landmark ruling that required it to accelerate carbon reduction efforts, dealing a blow to campaigners who have now turned to legal channels to pursue climate action. The appeals court in The Hague said Shell had a responsibility to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to protect people from global warming. Ruling coincides with the COP29 UN Climate Summit in Baku, Azerbaijan, where opening procedures were delayed by a dispute over how prominent the future of fossil fuels should be on the agenda. Heavy rains in Colombia's Bogota has led to widespread flooding, particularly in the city's northwestern sector. Overflowing Sewers are caused major disruptions on the main routes such as Evendia, Boyaca, Mayor Carlos Galan reported that at least three areas in the highway have experienced serious flooding. High water levels in some areas up to 2.3 feet are rendering some sections impassable and severely reducing visibility causing congestion to extended kilometers. The European Union has instructed Apple to stop geo-blocking on its services like the App Store, Apple Arcade, Music, iTunes, Books and even Podcasts. Geo-blocking involves restricting content based on a user's location, which the European Commission has flagged as potentially violating EU rules. The Commission has warned that if Apple does not resolve the issue, its national regulators may take enforcement action further. Apple has been given one month to present a plan to address the geo-blocking practices identified by the EU. Facebook and Instagram users in Europe will now have the option to see less personalized ads if they don't want to pay for an ad-free subscription. Moreover, tech giant Meta has announced a 40% price reduction in the current no ad subscription. This means that Facebook and Instagram will only show ads based on what you are currently looking at on the app. Well, moreover, these ads will only be related to things seen in the last two hours. However, people who chose the new option will have to watch unskippable ads for a few seconds. Experts say the latest move by Meta is targeted towards appeasing EU regulators.
Google's vice president and head of research, Yossi Mathias, has said that despite the rise of AI in tech, coding skills are still essential in the industry, while AI tools like GitHub, Copyplot, can help developers by generating code. Mathia said that programming fundamentals still remain crucial and AI is far from replacing human developers. Some industry experts suggest that AI can handle up to 70% of coding tasks. This has sparked concerns about job security for software engineers. However, Matthias clarified that AI is mainly an aid, particularly at junior levels, and still needs human oversight. A surge in Bitcoin has paused as traders assess the remaining market impact of President-elect Donald Trump's support for crypto. The digital asset is up by about 31% in the wake of Trump's election victory. Trump has pledged to create a friendly regulatory framework for crypto, set up a strategic Bitcoin stockpile and make the US the global hub for the industry. A one-time crypto skeptic, Trump reversed course after digital asset companies spent heavily during election campaigning. Oil prices edged up in nearly trade as signs of near-term supply tightens. It remained near the lowest in two weeks. That comes the day after OPEC downgraded its forecast for global oil demand growth in 2024 and 2025. But falling demand predictions and weakness in major consumer China continue to weigh on market sentiment. Experts suggest tight enforcement of sanctions on Iran could disrupt global oil supply while a tougher approach to China could further weaken oil demand in the world's largest consumer. Shares in Samsung Electronics, the world's top memory chip maker, fell to the lowest level in more than four years amid worries about the impact of US tariffs under a new Trump administration. The South Korean tech giant is the worst performing stock among global chip makers like TSMC and NVIDIA this year. This was due to its failure to tap into a booming demand for AI.